Hello and welcome to Lost Art. I'm Gar and I'm here with... Paul Helmet, whatever you want. Paul Helmet. We need to... Paul. Do you want just Paul? Sure. Right, okay. We'll stick with that. Yeah. We'll stick with that. I'm still going to call you Helmet. That's fine. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh The fight's gone out of me for any names now, really. Yeah. Wolfgang. <laughs> um, so, this episode, we are going to do uh, some of our favourite covers cover versions yes um, once again we could do 100 of these oh this was tough forever we I think I one. think I instantly came up with 14 to to, uh, instead of adding more I had to whittle them down yeah. to to 6 yeah it's so easy and it was tough it's so easy um, they're not necessarily pokey little covers that you didn't know our covers they're just our favourite covers um, yeah so what is your what's your first one my first one is Hazy Shade of Winter, originally by Simon and Garfunkel, by The Bangles this time. Outrageous. Like it? Just I, I just love it. It's so good. It, it just, it's one of those ones that's definitely better than the original. I don't care yeah. what anyone says. Yeah. And when you go back to listen to the original, it's so slow and yeah. it needs to be ramped up and hefted and just... I would never have put The Bangles, uh, I would never have associated them with the sound of that song. Like, Not at all. Like that little that mm. like that guitar lead and the Well big, that's 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 on the original, but it's much slower. Oh yeah, yeah, but like but not like on top of like the star shit yeah, and like exactly, the heft yeah. behind it, it and the it, way that, it's that, that has to I'm just sorry, it makes me feel that it was played wrong initially. Yeah. It just the, wasn't yeah, up to its potential. Programming really. wasn't compiled properly. I don't think that's a particularly popular uh Simon Garfield at all. I don't think so either, no. Um I I'll be honest, I heard that song years ago, the, the Bangles version of it. Well, it's it's on the, it's recorded for the soundtrack for Less Than Zero. Yeah. And I kind of forgot about it, and then one day I was driving back from Cork, of all places, and it was on the radio. I was I, I was I listened to some radio station in, like, Kildare or something. I don't know where the fuck I was driving back. Yeah. And they were doing, again, they were doing a top uh, cover section hour or whatever it was. Yeah. And they were taking... Um, requests from people who were just texting in, emailing in, or whatever. And someone requested a hazy shade of winter with the bangles. And I, in the back of my head, I was like, oh, I know that from somewhere, but I couldn't picture it in my head. And this is only about six months ago that I heard it again, fresh, and it blew my fucking brain off. Because first of all, it's amazing. It's just so right? good. It's it's everything about it is nailed. Right. It, the, it, it has the start of it is really haunty to have bang, that. Bang. Yeah. on the door baby bang bang <laughs> it's got that haunty haunty thing and then it's got this big thump of it there. <laughs> but I'll tell you this I'm gonna I'm gonna stand on the hill and I'll shout this until the day I die and you were the man to talk to about this somehow I think that the current style of writing music for Ghost was lifted from that song if you go back and listen to that fucking hazy shade of winter, it's not Billy Mills away from Square Hammer. There's something about the way that song is written, mm-hmm. and like even the, like the tone of guitar and the way they use their instruments, harmony, the, vocal harmony, yeah, everything in there just screams a ghost. Yeah, they could absolutely me. do that. Yeah, they could absolutely ghost could absolutely cover First that. First of all, they could nail it. Yeah, yeah. First of all, they could nail it. There's actually we don't not have a ghost song on. No, it was. Go- I was going to be on this. Yeah. To be honest with you, and especially since Rocky Erickson, yeah. I was going to throw in yeah. a few of Ghost cover. But to be honest with you. Ghosts are going to come up a lot in this. So I'm yeah. just holding off. Let's, let's not do it. Yeah, we've already turned Bangles into a ghost fucking thing. But I, I, yeah. I, I think that that song is very much a prototype for. Uh, well, that, that isn't a million words from. You know, it could. Uh, it's not even the riff. I think it's just the style of that song. Yeah, I think might have kickstarted. It, it's it's that Bangles version is kind of gothy. It's kind of poppy. It's kind of rocky. Yeah, but it's also hidden and. Low key enough to not be like it, it's it's not an obvious cover, you know what I mean? It's really not. Considering yeah. I don't think that was a single initially. I don't know. I don't know anything um, about it. I'll walk like an Egyptian. That's all I think. No, of but like to, to go back and listen to the Paul Simon and actually yeah. the, the Simon and Garfunkel yeah. version, I've no interest in it at all. After hearing that, you can't go back. Once you hear that, you no, can't go back. Yeah, done. You've been so it, it, I don't know how many of yours are you would consider better than the original, but that for me is definitely one of them. 
uh, a, a lot of them. I'd yeah, say. Mo- most of mine are a lot, not all of them, but a lot not of all of them. them. Yeah, so that for me is absolutely ruins the original. Yeah, yeah the original is almost a non-fucking entity. Almost. Yeah. There, I think they were playing it for. Is Rick Rubin produced it? What the? I mean, he does produce everything. He even, it just has matter. the the the, the fucking touch, doesn't he? It had um, Steve Bartek from Oingo Boingo on the acoustic. Really? I think you see because it was a because it was a. a one all produced soundtrack he was on a few of them I think maybe so he brought in session musicians to help mm. out so he would have been on I think that's kind of weird mm. Oingo Boingo Danny Elfman's band Danny Elfman's band so. yeah, Oingo, so who was your what's your first cover my first cover is a something I didn't really know was a cover properly until not that long ago it's a Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix yeah until I saw it on the list I was like and instantly your brain goes oh yeah it's Obviously. an old song mm. probably mm. loads of those ones that sound like that are yeah. probably untraceable um, old. it's it's weird uh, I, I was kind of doing some research on it for the podcast um, once again I actually done research for this podcast and we both did I think it shows it, hopefully I think it shows. people will give us a gold star on its forehead five stars and we'll have a good little note in our notebook to bring home yes exactly I hope so I also hope people are if they're listening to this on their podcast he thinks they're going to like rate and review it and that's much more help than shit all over if you have to whatever shit all over just give a five stars you cunts or massively correct us because we mm. are always going to be wrong yeah you've got the, we don't go we don't know as much as we think we do of course we don't it's also it's music it's subjective as well like you know yeah, but, but fa- um, facts aren't really <laughs> yeah, facts aren't facts are real um, <laughs> we hope uh, so yeah Hey Joe was uh, the, the first known commercial recording of it was by a band called The Leaves on air but it was also recorded by like the Sore Fairy you know like Weep Out yeah. like they recorded a version I wonder would they have had that um, that riff in Hey Joe I have no idea that yeah, I, don't, I don't know I know the Leaves recorded like four or five different versions of it but it's originally, um, for the fucking life of me, I can't remember the the, the original guy who is um, connected with the, the original version of the song. But there doesn't seem to be an actual original version of the song. There seems to be this weird amalgamation of three oh, or four folk songs. Of course, that's how a lot of yeah. them start. And someone has a riff, goes, you know yeah. what this could do with? A riff. Yeah. And then it just builds from mm. there. It's like a fucking like, community-built open source song, you know? Yeah. And, um, Jimmy got a hold of it and that, that was the end of it like the, the, the Leaves version of it was 1965 and Jimmy's version of it was uh, 1969 I think it was yeah. um, might have been 1970 I wouldn't have thought that was a cover because I thought the lyrics fit in quite mm. similar to what he would have been singing about maybe I think he just put his little bit of stank on it yeah you know I don't think the other versions of it had the fucking that his little groove I think yeah. they were sang straight like a folk song. Yeah, do you ever go back and listen to the original and you're like, where's the riff? I yeah, there's, there's no riff, chap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, no there's, riff. A mil- there's so many of those yeah. songs that are just, they hurt. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my uh, first, first choice. That, again, I didn't even know properly that was a cover. I wouldn't have thought so. Yeah, it, it just it kind of got lost in the mix for me. Yeah. <laughs> right, what's your next choice? My one is uh, Keep On Loving You, originally... By Rio Speedwagon, now by Cigarettes After Sex, one of the worst band names I've ever heard. It's pretty bad, isn't it? I think I heard Gus playing this before and I asked him what it was. Gus from the Nerdy Podcast, yeah. obviously, um, um, and I was like, Jesus Christ, that is a haunting version of what is a, a rock, stadium rock power ballad, mm. originally. I'm gonna, k- yeah, this one is a real downbeat, melancholy version of it. Mm. It's real... One thing I, I found, like, Cigarettes After Sex, I don't know much about them. I know they're some sort of American dream pop band from, yeah. I think, uh, I think they started in Texas and maybe moved to New York or something like that. But um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have, I should have gone to listen more to them, especially for this, to see what they were. Really, this cover is just, it's what I know them for. Yeah. I think it's on a million soundtracks. It could mm. be, I could be wrong, but that's definitely on some soundtrack because that's what a lot of bands do. They stick a cover on and get onto the soundtrack. It's Mad not, World. It's a, it's a fucking dodgy idea. Sometimes it can backfire badly on you. Sometimes it doesn't. No, sometimes it doesn't. That course. fucking Mad World for, uh, what's that rabbit film? Dan, Dan Darko. Darko. Yeah. <laughs> like, the rabbit film. Um, I fucking hate that <laughs> film. But anyway, yeah. no, it's garbage. Like, I, I, I like it a lot. I, I can see why people don't like it though. Garbage. I can't do it. But, uh, um, teenage Angst the movie it's about nothing but yeah, anyway but like, that's great no it no. is I wasn't angsty I was mad well, relaxed I was mad relaxed as a kid yeah. oh, yeah. I can't I can't associate with angst I can't because I had like 
a bit of uh, social anxiety. Not a lot. I had no machine to rage against, Paul. Did you not? Know? I don't think I've ever called you Paul. And oh, it's now it's being done. On. It's caught. It's catching It's on. caught on microphone. Lovely. Never ever call you Paul. I don't yeah. like it. That's the last. That's the end of it. Um, <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't have a huge amount to say about this song apart from the fact that I you was like blown it. away to find out it was a guy with a beard singing it. Yeah, and not a beautiful blonde haired girl that it really? sounds like now I don't know how you can tell if someone's blonde or not over the thing you can definitely tell Avor blonde before you heard them mm. some of them two of them Whoa, oh Jesus only one of them no two who cares know. anyway <laughs> Keep On Loving You is just a mad I, I, I've game. heard of the band and I think I've heard a couple of the songs and uh, none of them shook me I think they're one of those uh, I'm Going To Bed bands oh god they're, you're already in bed with a couple yeah. of Horlicks bands yeah the Horlicks yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Horlicks you're asleep yeah. I just do really because I am a massive fan of that song anyway yeah. I like Rio Speedwagon yeah. or as Ellen Partridge calls them or Oreo e- oh Speedwagon yeah. Oreo Speedwagon uh, I do love listening to this song mm. It's I love melancholy version but not in the sense that Marvel movies do oh do you remember there was a two year period where every trailer had a slow down and it was somber version or El- it was just uh, any, any old shy this wouldn't be one of those this has a little bit more going for it yeah no I can't <laughs> it just was overdone and it was always when someone was looking at a destroyed city oh yeah yeah yeah. no cause uh, I'm having a good time no they bring it down time. yeah just <laughs> shit like that would just be killer this you know what disc you could put that in with that but it's definitely better and yeah. it's not it's, as far as I know it's not useful really? um, what is your next one my next one is uh, uh, a, a local lass is uh, Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor Sinead O'Connor yeah. it's a great cover to launch it's your career it's super um, it's also kind of oh, hang on this wasn't it's this Prince wasn't the one that launched her career this was on the second album was it uh, uh, no it's on the first album are you sure I'm almost certain I'm almost 100% um <laughs> I just fucked you up. Yeah, you might have fucked me there. It doesn't matter because this isn't the breakthrough songs. Anyway, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Got me double, double confused. Um, yeah, it is off our second album. Yeah, you're right. Uh, from 1990. Um, so apparently, this song, this is a Prince song, and the Prince song was written for uh, a band he was forming called the Family. Yeah. And uh, he was this managed was, to form his bands, wasn't he? Yeah. Like, on the outside, becoming like a little kind of yeah. uh, band leader, but not, exactly. Do you know what it was? He's so prolific in songwriting mm. that if you have a bunch of songs, give them away so you can enjoy other people mm. doing them and yeah. make money off them at the same time. So that's what he did. But he, was, he was trying to get a little band together. He was going to call it The Family. and uh, Prince and The Family. Style. Sorry, yeah, exactly. That's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> so uh, he wrote it for them and uh, there was uh, an original version of it he wrote and recorded. Yeah, in, I've heard it. I've heard it. It was like 1984. 19, yeah. uh, it was 1984. Um and it didn't come out until 2018. It only came out last year. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, on, on an album. It was, it was covers, on, wasn't yeah, it? it was on a compilation. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah there was right. a live version of it that he recorded in uh, 1990. That's the one I would have heard. Three, I think. And I don't think it was particularly great quality. No, uh, it was a, it was some live thing yeah. he, rec- he recorded. Um, but the the original version he wrote in 1984. Um, so it's, that's how old it is. And uh, her, her version of it came out in, in 1990. But apparently. I was reading something today that uh, they didn't really know each other. That whole song kind of deal uh, was done through, oh, of course, the, yeah. through the record label, yeah? Wasn't a good meeting. Yeah, and apparently she was in the States and uh, he called her over to fucking Paisley Park or whatever to talk yeah, to her. And all the stories about people going off to that gaff end differently. Yeah, well, either playing basketball. Or, or just getting... <laughs> or yeah, murder. Will, was, and apparently he beat the shit out of Sinead O'Connor. He tried to. I don't know if he did. Yeah, apparently he did. But he did. She, uh, in, a, in an interview she gave a couple of years ago. He she chased said, her. It, it, she, yeah. she ended up on the road on her own, yeah. didn't she? Yeah. Apparently he chased her through fucking hitting her. And, he, and she said, I hit him back. But yeah. fucking, his digs had a bit more fucking weight behind them. Yeah. And because fucking, she's only a slight little yoking anyway. She's so Irish though. Yeah. Fight like me dad as well. <laughs> um, with a big bald head now, yeah. She, she should have been, I'd say she was swinging for the rafters, but, but apparently... Prince fucking land the digs on Sinead O'Connor over yeah, I, this song. I would well believe that. I don't think he's particularly nice. No, I don't think he... I never heard anything about him being no. a, a superman. He was uber controlling with all the girl bands that he started. Yeah. He started one girl band. It's like nasty girl. Yeah, he was yeah. super controlling. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't a particularly nice guy. No, no. It was a, possibly, a, possibly a genius. I never really bought into the whole Prince is a genius thing. I think he, 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 he is a musical genius, I think. Well, Do you reckon? You know, you see, the thing about it is, right... When, this thing about calling someone a musical genius, it has the quality, has the, the, 
has music in front of it so it's within that realm so it's yeah. okay to call someone a musical genius and not have not have people think of them as a genuine genius like genius. a boffin boffin I yeah. think, I think so he was so if you say musical genius it's quite a lower maybe, key version maybe. of a genius.